Good morning everyone. Today we have a really good breakfast planned. We are going to be making a quiche with an olive oil based crust. We're going to be showing you how to make that and we're also going to be showing you how to brew the perfect cup of coffee. So first things first, we need our coffee. Let's get started with that. For us, there's nothing better than waking up on a cold morning and having a nice hot cup of coffee. So to brew this coffee, you're going to need a French press. We use a 32 ounce. You're going to need a couple of coffee cups. And today we're going to be using Tim Hortons whole bean coffee. So we're going to need to grind this up in our grinder. First thing we need to do is get our stove fired up and get the hot water going. So for a 32 ounce French press, we always use three tablespoons of coffee. So I'm measuring out our three tablespoons. We're gonna get those grinded up. And you don't have to use fresh ground coffee. This is just what we're using this morning. Believe it or not, a French press will actually make almost any coffee taste really good. Now that our water is boiling, I'm going to go ahead and fill up our French press. And our first step is going to be to put our top on and let this sit for four minutes. And we like our coffee really hot, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat our glasses with the extra boiling water. Just put about an inch in each cup. So it's been exactly four minutes. I'm gonna pull the top off the French press and the ground beans have all come up to the top. So next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this a nice stir. Put our top back on and now this is gonna sit for another eight minutes. So that's part of the reason we went ahead and preheated our glasses because this does take a total of 12 minutes to get your cup of coffee, but I promise you it's gonna be more than worth it. So let's get back to this in eight minutes. All right, it's been eight minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and dump out the water that was in our coffee cups. And our coffee is ready to go. So let's plunge this down. You want to go nice and slow with it. And there's your nice, perfect French press cup of coffee. And we like to put some sort of dairy in ours. And we're actually lucky enough to get a half gallon of fresh cream from a local dairy. So that's what we've been putting in our coffee this past week. And we got this nice thick cream. So there you have it, the perfect cup of coffee. And we have nothing but great things to say about using a French press. We've been using ours for probably about a year and a half now. We absolutely love it. And I think my favorite thing about using the French press is you don't need really good high quality to actually make a good cup of coffee. Most of the time we just use Folgers and it turns out awesome. Another great thing is we've been having that cream and having that fresh cream in this coffee has just turned out awesome. So we're gonna enjoy this cup of coffee and then we're gonna get started on our quiche. Let's get started on our quiche crust. And like I said before, this is an olive oil based crust. This crust we've been using for probably a few years now and it turns out really good every time. Nice and flaky and it's got a really good flavor with that olive oil. So first thing you're gonna need is a quarter cup of really cold water. We're using water that we just got out of our well. And you're also gonna need to add to that a quarter cup of olive oil. So let's do that. And that water being cold and the olive oil also being semi-cold is really gonna help here. You wanna stir this together until it kind of thickens up and gets cloudy. Okay, we stir this for about 30 seconds. As you can tell, it's kind of thickened up and it's a nice cloudy color. Now we're gonna add about a half teaspoon of salt. So in here so far, we have a quarter cup of cold water, a quarter cup of olive oil, and then the half teaspoon of salt. And we're gonna add in a half a cup of just plain white flour. Okay, so this is the consistency you're looking for. You want it to look kind of like a pie crust, and you want it to kind of come together like that in a ball. Just like that, so there's our crust. I'm gonna put it into a ball, or as good of a ball as I can get it, and then we're gonna put it in our casserole dish, and this is an 8.25 inch 
casserole dish this is what we're going to use today and since we have all the olive oil in this crust already there's no need to grease this dish or anything this will pop right out when we're done and there's different ways you can do this you can take this with a rolling pin and you can actually roll it out if you'd like what I usually do is I kind of just shape it and stick it right in the middle of the pan and then I'll start from the center work my way out until I fill up this whole dish including the sides Okay, our quiche crust is ready. We're going to be adding all kinds of awesome stuff to this, but the first thing we need to get going is our bacon, because that needs to be fully cooked before we put it in there. So I'm going to get that going, and then we're going to get our sausage going. And then Ariel's going to jump in here, and she's going to talk to you about what veggies we're using, and she's going to get those all chopped up for us. So we're using this nice, thick-cut bacon that we actually cut and cured and smoked ourselves, and we will link that video up above if you guys want to check that out. And then we're also going to be using some of our pork sausages that we ground up um, a few months back. And we'll also link that video for you guys. And we're also gonna get this sausage going. And this is about a half pound we're using. And we're gonna make kind of a giant patty, a real thin one, and that's gonna fill the bottom of our casserole dish. And then we're basically gonna layer the quiche on top of that. While the sausage and the bacon is cooking, I'm gonna get some of the vegetables that we're putting in the quiche today chopped up. We're putting in carrots, potatoes, and an onion, a red onion, and a little shallot that we have. I'm gonna first start with the carrots and I'm gonna peel those. Even though the quiche cooks for a long time, the potatoes and the carrots will be better and they'll cook more thoroughly if we get them pre-cooked, which is how we usually make it. These carrots have been stored for about four months, which is totally awesome. Something new to us since we haven't stored them that way. And the potatoes too are doing really well. And this year we're hoping to have some potatoes left over to plant for seeds. So if everything goes as planned, that should work. This is a German butterball potato. One of our favorite varieties to grow. It's not a russet, I don't believe, but it, it's usually a little bit yellower, but it um, fries up really well. Last, I'm gonna add a shallot and the red onion. These shallots usually grow a little bigger, but that's okay. They pack a lot of flavor, so tiny is all right too. And these have been storing for a long time. This onion, I'm pretty sure, is Red Bull from Territorial, and I am so impressed with it. It is starting to sprout just a little bit, but this onion is, I'm pretty sure we're going on seven, eight months for this onion. So it's very old, and I read that it stores for 10 months to a year. So excellent red onion to grow, and they will get bigger than this. We just planted them a little bit late in our garden this last season. Our bacon is finished, so we are going to be cooking all of this in here, or just pre-cooking it a little bit. Eric put the sausage down as the first layer of the quiche. He's gonna be assembling that. I'm gonna get the bacon chopped, as well as crack our eggs and get that ready for the quiche. This bacon's super thick, but we really like it that way. We're gonna put the bacon aside and get our eggs cracked. We're going to start with eight eggs for this. We're going to be adding cream, salt, and some greens that we have. So just some dehydrated greens from the summer. So like Eric said, we're both extremely excited about the milk and cream that we've been getting. 
This is something we've been wanting to do for a long time, get either a goat or a cow share, a milk share is what it's called. Basically we get to pay for raw milk and cream and we don't have to raise the cow ourselves. So that's awesome. Again, it's raw milk, so it has all the bacteria and more importantly to us, it is not homogenized. So that means that it hasn't been spun really fast and we get cream that separates from the milk. So we can make cheese, make our kefir yogurt and do some other things with it as well. In fact, cheese making is something that we briefly did in Oregon. We weren't too fond of it. I want to do simpler cheeses like feta, cottage cheese, maybe even ricotta. This is a little log of mozzarella that we made last night. So Eric will be putting this on the quiche today. I'm going to go ahead and add one more egg in this. We usually do nine. And we have been getting super lucky. Our chickens, as you know, we raised them last year from baby chicks. So we didn't have a lot of eggs throughout winter. In fact, I'd almost say none. So they have been up to production with, I think we're almost at nine hours of light. We are sometimes even getting, you know, seven eggs in a day now. So we're really, really excited about that. The potatoes, onions, and carrots are almost done. We're going to be adding that to the quiche and then we will add the rest of the ingredients. All right. All these potatoes and carrots and onions are about halfway cooked right now. And we're going to add them to our quiche crust. And in the bottom of there, we already have our sausage patty. Okay, now we're going to add our bacon on top of that. And then we're going to add our egg mixture. We've got our oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm going to stick this in there just like this. We're not going to cover it. We're not going to put the cheese on there yet. We're probably going to cook this for about half an hour. Pull it out, slice our mozzarella, put it on top, and go for another 10 minutes. All right, the quiche, you can tell it's getting close to being done, but it's still a little jiggly. The egg isn't quite cooked, and it's been about a half an hour. Let's add the rest of our ingredients to it, and then it should take about 10 or 15 more minutes until it's done. We're going to add our mozzarella cheese, and we're also going to add some of our pepperoncinis on top. So this is the cheese Ariel mentioned earlier. She just made this um, yesterday. And it's our first time making mozzarella, so let's actually try some and see how it turned out. Mm, turned out really good, and we used um, raw milk that we picked up from our milk share to make this, so let's get this on the quiche. All right, back in the oven for probably around 10 or 15 more minutes. The quiche is done. We're going to let that sit for about 10 minutes before we cut into it. All right, we're going to see if we can get a slice of this quiche out. It looks really good. We like a little salsa on top of them. So like I said, we've been making this quiche crust for a long time now. We've made a ton of different kinds of quiches. You can pretty much put anything in this quiche. It's really good, kind of like if you're making chili. If you have a bunch of stuff in your fridge that you need to get rid of, throw it in this, add some cheese, make the crust, and you have yourself a really good meal. Another way we actually like to make it too, but we didn't make it this time, is we'll use our muffin tin, and we'll just make a little tiny mini quiches, and these are great for kids or if you're on the go. This is a very simple quiche crust. Like I said, it's only four ingredients, and it's quick and easy. We're going to enjoy this meal, and we'll see you guys next time.